It's Writing Wednesday. Okay, and so today welcome we're going to back discuss to Writing Wednesday. That we're writing and today we are going to be doing a little so bit of off with Parker typing. It's kind of like a filler scene a little bit to get from one chapter to the next. So we're going to, to discuss to chapter to what chapter. we want to actually so accomplish here. So I'm in chapter 9, and, I hope you enjoy the video. and this is going to be Parker's, from Parker's point of view. So I have put Parker there because I have a habit of head jumping. <laughs> head jumping is basically when you start with one character and like a few paragraphs later, suddenly you're in the thoughts and mind of the next character. Some people say that they like head jumping. A lot of people say it's very distracting and it jars them out of the novel. So I'm trying to avoid doing that here. And... At the beginning of the scene, basically I'm kind of laying out what I would like to accomplish here. So things that I want to accomplish is introduction of all my brides at dinner. So we're going to have dinner because we're setting it up that um, the scene before that Ben and Kitty are getting ready to go down to dinner at the hotel and Kitty is going to meet all of the family for the first time. She's one of Ben's friends and... Um, we're also going to have some of the brides, not all of them, <laughs> meet everybody at, um, well, all the adults, shall I say, and uh, we get some discussions going, and then I have to get it to a point where I'm going with chapter 10, which I have actually already mostly written, where the ladies are together in their own room, dealing with a sewing emergency and chitter-chattering about various stuff, and we reveal some beautiful tidbits about Cora, who was married to Nate. And if you all remember in the last book, Nate passed away. So, um, thanks to Accomplish, so we're to introducing our brides at dinner. We're going to tease Marshall over his absent bride. Marshall's going to be a little bit late to dinner, but he'll get there. And uh, Jasmine will not be there. Um, <laughs> Spoiler alert, Marshall's bride's name is Jasmine. So everyone's going to be tactful in their non-mention of Brittany, so we have to kind of bring that up somehow without actually fully mentioning her name and just kind of going, oh yeah, you know, it's good to see you, Gabe, even though he's single and he was supposed to be getting married this weekend. Um, but he is not as of yet, even though we know from the book before that they do get together and they will get married this weekend, they're just going to get married a little bit late. So, um, Gabe will not be meeting his father's demands, and, but the happy couple will get married. They had their happily for now in the book before, um, convincing him. And now that, is it convincing him? Yeah, I think it's convincing him. And, um, <laughs> and they will have the lovely joy of getting married in the wedding. It's just that they will not, um, have their wedding when the other ladies and gentlemen get married. Triple wedding. Still a triple wedding because he has given Jake and Sterling his position at the altar, which was very, very nice of him. He didn't have to do that, but they've been trying to get married and they actually um, put off their wedding um, because Nate had his funeral. So it was kind of a bad time to, you know, have a funeral at a wedding together. So they postponed and then a couple other things happened at home we just bring that up to delay it a little bit further and that's why they are getting married now so kelly has her dress emergency um so they have to mention this we have to get this into the storyline so that they know why that there are all, all the ladies are moving over to Elle's room to have a chit chat and just generally enjoy some time together and what are the guys going to do? So there are some things that we need to get out in the open and air and do some updates about. Um, so it's important that the guys talk about their finances because as we know, a lot of them have had their personal accounts frozen. They've had their business um, accounts frozen. So how are these businesses continuing to function? Can they still function? Are they getting to the end of their rope? Are they going to go bankrupt? Um... You know, they've probably been doing their own internal audits, so what are the results of that? Has Kepler, or Agent Kepler of the FBI, actually, you know, said anything recently? Um, so these are all things that we would like to know. Has Henry got his fo uh, accounts frozen too? We don't know, because Henry just finally arrived um, during Nate's funeral, 
and he hasn't gone back, but he's arrived from Asia, and uh, so we would like to know what's going on with him as well. And then, so what do the lawyers have to say about it? Why is um, the lovely Ramsley Medical Hospital Corporation not affected? We we know why from the book before, but not everybody else knows why. And they're going to demand some answers because James is still not in prison. Um, he will be after the wedding. He gets to be in a minimum security prison. He broke a deal. But I'm sure some people have some things to say and would like to know really what's going on. So Ben is going to offer some financial assistance and the ants are going to take tea in their sitting room area just to kind of move them out of the way. It's just a quick little mention. And as you can see there, I have a little sticky note. And this sticky note is telling me the chapters and who is in what chapter and where it was going to. So you could see from there that Marshall opened, then it was, um, I believe, Ben, and then Parker, and then, you know, we're going all the way down, and we kind of went back and forth between those three and then the girls that are associated with them and then we're going to learn about Cora in chapter 10 so it just kind of keeps me straight to have some sticky notes every once in a while to know who was who was the last one we talked to before this because I don't want to have like um I've got a lot of characters to keep track of in this one because everybody's out for the wedding and it's going to be a bigger novel than normal. Normally I'm around 50,000 words. I am maybe a little over halfway there. And I'm at already 49, no, sorry, 46,000. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, going to be a little bit of a stretch and a little bit longer. And we're going to have to figure out where and how things are going when I'm going to actually cut it off. <laughs> But so far, we're in, well into chapter 9. Um, my chapters are going to be a little bit shorter in this one, and I think I'm going to keep that trend because when I do the audiobooks, no offense, it's a lot when it's 5,000 words a chapter. It's just a lot. So it, it takes longer, and it's a lot of, of going through it. And I find it a little bit more difficult. So we're going to try and do a little bit shorter chapters. And I find I'm still getting all the information that I need and where I'm going with them. And it's probably more concise than previously because I find that a lot of my chapters could have been a lot shorter in my other books. Um, yeah, I wasn't, wasn't doing so well with layouts in the other books and timings. But we're working on that. You gain skills as you go and as you write, which is very, very important. Um, and, and that's the thing. Every time you're writing, you're learning more about your style, more about yourself, you are honing your craft. So it's important to keep writing and to keep honing that craft and learn new things and experiment a little bit. So now we are started with chapter nine with Parker and we're going to just write for a little while and it's going to basically set up the scene. So he's already introduced Adriana and his and her family to his mother Dottie. And he did that a couple chapters ago. And we took that one, I think, from Adriana's point of view, actually. So it was really nice to see her point of view and her thoughts on meeting his mother. And it went very well. Um, Adriana is an overseas bride, which we learned about in convincing him that Parker had indeed solved the bride issue by basically buying his bride from overseas. And he was very surprised with what he got, but it's going to turn out okay. Things are, things are going okay. And he's starting to, well, he, he's, he's come around to the idea, shall we say. And she seems to like him, even though she's very shy, but they're, they're doing all right. So... He's going to reflect a little bit on their meeting because that meeting was from Adriana's point of view. So it's now nice to have Parker's point of view. And um, he's, he's still feeling a little nervous over, over what's going on, which he's finding a little bit really ridiculous because I think Parker is one of those people who, other than James tends to have some confidence. I mean, he doesn't have confidence with James because he and James, um, his father, who is not really his father, as we learned in 
convincing him, have some unresolved issues. And uh, I think he always kind of feels a little bit like a petulant boy <laughs> around his father, James. But otherwise, he comes through for everybody else. And I think he he has some confidence. He enjoys who he is, what he does. And he's a handsome enough fellow. And his previous, you know, people that he sort of dated for ladies tended to have a lot of confidence and tended to be women who, who, you know, went after what they wanted and he liked that. But now he's got a lovely, younger, shy bride who has very traditional values and uh, he's finding that it's, it's a bit different, but he does like her and he feels a bit protective of her and he wants things to go well in their marriage, which I think is good. I mean, they're both starting off with the hope that things will go well and the commitment to try it. So we'll see what happens to these lovely people. So now he's about to introduce her to everyone, his brothers, their soon to be brides, his aunts and his cousins. There were a lot of people who would be making a, making Adriana's acquaintance and Parker wasn't sure how she was going to handle it. Perhaps she would be embarrassed by all of the intention. So he is, again, concerned with her, which is really nice. And it's going well. So this is, again, just setting up the scene. Trying to make it so that we can get, get towards where we need to go, but also put it, instilling some background into the beginning of the chapter. For some reason, it made Parker feel even more protective of her. It was an odd feeling. Normally, he was all for equal rights and dated strong women who knew exactly what they wanted and had the drive to get it. There's two ands in a sentence there, so I'm going to have to fix that at some point. A little editing to go on to. So now he's forced into a bit of more of a traditional role. Parker found that he didn't mind it. So you can see that they are slowly and cautiously warming up to each other, which is nice. It's, it's a cute little dance. It'd be better if they had dated first, but you know how it is. You get ultimatums and draconian ones, which are entirely legal, and odd beans. So um, basically, James, Parker, Gabe's, and Marshall's dad had given an ultimatum. And he had said that basically they needed to get married within the month and he did this at Nate's funeral <laughs> very um fantastic timing on this they need to get married within the month they need to have a pregnancy within the first year of marriage and they need to stay married for a minimum of five years to their wife um, in order to uh, continue to have their jobs keep their salary keep their condos that the company has and get the shares that they would inherit. And it's a bit draconian and a bit far-reaching in a lot of ways, but it has made for a very interesting storyline, and we have these three gentlemen who had to get married in this short amount of time. So Gabe asked Brittany, his childhood nemesis, more or less, childhood stalker in some ways too, Marshall has asked someone whom he has been friends with for a while now, and he really does like her, and he feels that they could have a very good life together, and Parker decided to go with the, uh, the overseas bride agency, and that's how he has Adriana. So Iona and Christina, those are Adriana's sisters. Christina is a little bit older than Iona. I haven't actually said how old they are, but that's okay. So they will not be attending the dinner. Um, all the Ramsley children have been corralled by some staff for their own dinner and playtime afterward. Kelly's half-brother Josh has come to the wedding. Caden, which is Dylan's oldest, and his friend Cece were unofficially in charge. So Josh, the a few books ago, was around 15. Caden and Cece were 11, going on 12. But we've had enough time for Kelly to have a pregnancy, so that means they're all at least one year older, if not two years older. Um, I'm probably going with the year older, so I would put them now at 13, 
going on to 14, even, maybe even 14. So we can say 14, we'll give him a little over a year, and that would make dear Josh 17. So they are going to be in charge of the littler ones, all these preteens and younger, and uh, have some fun with them, with the staff, some hotel staff to oversee it. That way, boom, the kids will be there for the wedding, but they're also hustled out of the way <clears throat> when we need to make more adult conversation, which is very important right now. So Parker had managed to convince Adriana's mother and numerous uncles, because the uncles came with, that to America to see the wedding, that Iona and Christina will be well supervised and have fun with their soon-to-be relatives. It hadn't been an easy discussion, but Parker had, was had been rewarded with smiles from the tw two girls um, when they realized they could have fun with the kids of their own age and skip all the boring adult talk. So good for them. I'm sure they'll have a great time. And it will go okay. Of course, now he's a little bit worried that it might not because he doesn't want to get on his mama or soon-to-be mama-in-law's bad side. So yes, this is kind of how I write. <laughs> I put a, just kind of a general outline of what I want to accomplish scene to scene, and then I try to follow that kind of step by step, um, working my way through it. Now, I do also have a bit of a larger outline of the whole book itself, and the idea behind that is so that I know where each scene fits, so that I don't get confused and I don't accidentally put something out of order because I do have bad habits of doing that and I will admit that sometimes I just you know can't remember exactly where in the timeline things go and I might actually accidentally put something there and then we develop a plot hole that has to be fixed or I accidentally fall down and never fix and if you hear that big snort in the background that would be my puppy Bean <laughs> so Bean is right here right now checking to see if I have any snacks for her before bed <laughs> while I do this little recording of my video. Some people um, enjoy a new a new program called Plotter, and that is, if you'll excuse my expression on the screen, I was looking at a fly. And then I come down and I'm checking out um, my things to accomplish to see if that if I've gotten far enough to start the next bit, but I don't think I really have. I'm still on the introduction at this point. Um, so, yes, Plotter is a web-based program. It's good for authors. I'm going to have to do some, do some sharing on that on YouTube for my videos as well. And um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. It helps you kind of design how you want to lay out your book, how you want to outline it. Um, I'm not sure if it's better than what I've been using in Excel when it comes to my my um, particular Camping Girl series, because I find that one is really well done, the way I've set it up in Excel. But I'm willing to give Plotter a chance, and I want to learn more about it, and it's early days yet for the program, but I think that they're adding more and more um, different elements to it, so I think the usage out of it will actually be beneficial and I just bought an outright member subscription for life so I find you know it wasn't that expensive it wasn't great <laughs> as a brand as a new author trying to get back into it again um, but but I think it will be worth it in the end once I've got the full hang of using it so we'll have to do some videos on that and learning how to use Plotter and uh, P-L-O-T-T-E-R and it's a web-based program, or you can use it as an app on your phone. And yeah, yeah, it's. I think it. I think it will work well. I just need to get used to using it. Um, I used to be a pantser. Now I am more of a plotter, and I find that it structures my writing better. And again, like I said, I don't follow through as many plot holes and have things out of sequence or miss key elements, things like that. And um, I have better better uh, chapter structure since I've been doing that. So here on the screen you'll see um, we have basically um, brought them into the restaurant area and 
I've put an XXX in the last sentence. So you'll see Parker supposed Adriana's mother was XXX enough. And the word going through my mind is escort, but that is not the word that I want to use. Um, like they're escorting her, he, she's escorting them around. What I want to say um, has fled my mind because sometimes as a writer, a word will not come to me. And then, you know, the next day it'll be like, oh, this is what I meant. So I'm meaning like basically somebody who is there to um, keep an eye on the lovely couple to make sure that nothing untoward happens. Um, so there's a specific word I'm looking for. You know, all those Regency romance books, it's definitely in there. Um, but I just can't find it at the moment. And because I can't find it and I can't find another word that I like, please don't whine. Please don't whine. Why are you whining? I know it's getting toward bedtime, but you don't need to whine, little Miss Bean. So I can't really use a synonym on it, even though I'm using synonym for surprise, because he was surprised earlier, so I want to go with something a little bit different. And so we will we will definitely find that word. I think it starts with a C. Chaperone! Chaperone! See? Chaperone. That's the word. Isn't it funny how things leave and then come to you again? So I'm going to have to go back to those lovely X's and put chaperone in. And you can see the little wheels turning in my head as I try to find that particular word because I can't find it. It's gone. Don't ask me why, but it left. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, he's, he has seen Ben again. Parker has. And Ben, who we did uh, describe as a little bit husky and thick. Okay, let's be, let's be real. He, he's overweight. Poor guy was more than just husky or thick. He, he had put on some pounds. And um, he had done that. And since Nate's wedding, Kitty has been his friend and has been looking after him and making sure that he's eating better and going to the gym each day. And he's lost some weight. So Ben's, Ben's looking a little better, which is good for him, and it's healthier for him, and he has a long, hopefully, joyful life ahead of him. We'll see how that goes. I don't know whether he and Kitty are going to make a couple of this book, or... No. No. Yes, I know. Oh, you just want to go to bed. You do, don't you? Yes, I know you do. But I'm busy here, and you need to, um, knock it off. <laughs> I love you. Answer is no. Are you coming up? You want to come up for a pet? Come on. I'm not going to bed just yet. Hurry up. You don't need to do this. You had snacks. You went pee. You are a happy puppy. Yes, you could start bed without me. Come on, go to bed. That's my beautiful Boston Terrier Bee. Yes, because that's who she is. She's a barker. My apologies. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so, where were we? Oh, yes, Ben brought a girl that Parker didn't know. That would be Kitty. And he's never bought, brought a date along before, so Parker's kind of assuming that this girl might mean something to Ben, which is a great assumption in this case, because it is true. <laughs> And he's very happy for Ben, which is lovely. Then we have Jake and Sterling, which we have said that Sterling and Jake are going to take Gabe's spot at the altar. So Parker's going to reflect on that a moment. Uh, let's see. Is pity Gabe and Brittany weren't tying the knot tomorrow? Parker thought the two of them might either be made for each other or would drive each other to madness. And it's true. They might do them both. Either way, it would have been interesting to watch their lives unfold. But unfortunately, things had not gone well with the couple, and Gabe had given his spot at the altar to Jake and Sterling, because dear Gabe will not be getting married. Because at this point, dear Britt has left him. She will come back, don't worry. We know this already from the book before, as I think I've previously told you. As Parker understood it, Jake and Sterling had planned to get married, but their cousin Nate's death had happened. So the funeral had obviously taken priority, so dear Nate 
um, has passed away. And now we have Cora. We'll have a little bit of introduction to her, so to speak, because the next chapter is going to be from her point of view. And she will talk a little bit about what Agent Kepler has been talking to her about regarding her husband's death. And we will get some insight into her and Nate's marriage. Hi. Are you a Wookiee? Are you a Wookiee? I think you are. I think you're a Wookiee. I think you are, you little grouchy thing. Mm-hmm. Come here. We only have a few more minutes of narrating this beautiful video. And then it can talk to itself. Uh-huh. Yes, it can process. So you will just have to be quiet. Do you think you can be quiet? Do you think you can be quiet? I don't think you can. I think you're being silly. Okay. So Parker's going to get his lovely bride-to-be and mother seated. And he's going to give his own mother, Dottie, a kiss on the cheek before taking his own seat. And then dear Dottie's going to, to um, tactfully complain that Marshall isn't there yet, nor is Marshall's bride. And she was really hoping to see Marshall's bride before the wedding. Now, you will see here, I am looking for a fly, and I'm going to go off and swat the fly. So we will, um, shall we say, wrap it up tonight, because my little puppy is making noises and would like to go to bed. So thank you for coming. I really, truly appreciate you all join me for Writing Wednesday number two, where we talk a little bit about what's going on and what I'm writing about lately. Um, so we are knee deep in the wedding. And yes, I'm leaving the screen. Woohoo! <laughs> so thank you for coming. Subscribe and uh, hit the bell so that you get all the videos, notifications. And if you like this video, hit the like button. If you have a comment, please comment. And I am back with the swatter because kill the flies. Yes, and that was a bit of a hard seat, but sometimes rolling chairs roll. And anyhow, everybody have a good night and we will talk to you later.